So we are going ahead with female sexual disorders. And to cover this topic, uh, this is, you know, what's love got to do with it? That's the name of the topic. Sorry? Okay. Okay, thank you. So I would like to call upon Jasmina, Dr. Snehal and Anu Mehta to throw light on various topics like polycystic ovarian disorder, PCOD, breast cancer, ovarian cancer, cervix cancer, infertility, endometriosis, menstrual problems, menopause, fibroids and cysts. So can we have a big round of applause for Jasmina, Dr. Snehal and Anu? Dr. Kwesi, ladies are waiting for you. <laughs> okay. Now it's one man and three women. <laughs> she, uh, so, I think you want to show your PowerPoint? Okay, so can I just give a short introduction to why this is important? I think in my country, there are many, 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 many women today who are suffering from PCODs, polycystic ovaries, and are dealing with number of problems, including no periods, to very heavy periods, to having hair on the face, to not knowing what to do about it and where it comes from. So, Snehal right now is going to show you a few PowerPoints. She is amazing with what she does. Yasmina is going to share further on the, sec on the Western aspect of what is happening outside. And I'll probably share with you the rest of it along with Dr. Kwesi. Thank you. Thank you, Anu. OK, till this starts working, uh, we will talk a little bit about breast cancer. Uh, that's actually the most common cancer uh, amongst women that I'm coming across uh, in New Zealand and in Serbia and Croatia where I work uh, the most. So where both areas, you know, it's different parts of the world, totally different cultures, but the issues are uh, the same. Because uh, our uh, breasts and breast cancers are deeply related to our beings, uh, our inherited uh, relationship to our loved ones and how we perceive the world as females and as mothers. So all of you that are in mental health uh, understand difference between uh, conflicts, between breast cancer of the glands and breast cancer of the ducts. Those are two most common cancers uh, in females. And we all understand that uh, cancer of uh, glands are related to worry about uh, depending its worry for child, mother, uh, nest, or for partner, others, depending of the side of the uh, of our handiness. So we have to uh, understand how important love is. We are talking about love here. Uh, and what is opposite of the love? It's fear. So what is worry? Worry is a fear of future event. So even something that didn't happen, uh, we worry about, and that's what reflects in our biological uh, expression and in our symptoms. Now, when we talk about ductal uh, cancer, we all know what it is all about, type of conflict and separation. Again, love, separated from loved ones, whoever it is, whether it's mother-child nest or partners, uh, colleagues, friends, um, whatever else. And it can be our job, it can be our work. I had experience with a lot of different uh, cases and uh, it's very interesting how our perception determines uh, certain things that we can't even predict. And I remember the uh, lady who had a breast cancer that was ductal breast cancer for me. It was 
by the textbook, uh, it was related to the partner. You know, Hendon is determined that it's related to the partner. And I said it's a separation issue related to um, the, the, the partner, but uh, she or, or others, and she said it's not. I don't have any issues around that. And actually, uh, at the end, you know what that came to? It was her perception of her business being her baby. So it was expressing itself on a mother-child nest side, uh, actually expressing it the partner side, but because of, the, of the, her the perception, her business for her was uh, was a child, was, was a baby. So we never know, uh, we can't ever guess, uh, and it's where I learned, really when people ask me, what's that conflict about? You know, that issue, what is the conflict behind? What's the emotion behind? And uh, very often when I say someone what it is, they would say, oh, you know, they can't relate to it. So we have to know exactly the story of the person in order to uh, be able to help them understand what brought them to that place. Uh, also, what's quite important to realize is that our past, uh, not just in this lifetime, has a great impact on us. The reason why uh, we have a group of women, they can experience the same situation and someone will be affected and some won't at all. So why they have that high sensitivity level uh, it has to do with something prior to that. And I had just a very interesting case prior to this conference. Uh, it wasn't a cancer. It was a lady who had all her life cysts in her breasts. And it's always, according to medical assessment, on the edge of going into something much more dangerous. And she has to carefully monitor her condition. Uh, basically, what we came to is that in one of past lives, she was punished by her breast being cut off. And it manifested in a way that all her life, her hormones were different and differently functioning than other uh, females. Like she would have swollen breasts after the uh, period, not before the period. And all doctors were puzzled with that and said, you are just very different than others. Uh, and it's because you have higher level of uh, estrogen uh, than what is the average. It was their explanation. And it came down really to the experience uh, that was happening much prior to this lifetime. And every time when she goes to check up and goes for mammogram, and you know what happens with mammogram? Breasts get clamped. It's, it's really a reminder, and she's running on the tracks all the time. So it's, uh, it's very, very interesting what areas we have to look at when it comes uh, to our feminine uh, side and how it affects us. And breasts are really the symbol of femininity. It's how we nurture our loved ones. Um, a, lot of, a lot of examples. Uh, one, uh, one advice uh, is really to start researching and start resolving whatever happened as soon as possible. And best results that I had uh, are always uh, right at the beginning, especially with uh, 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 cancer that is on, on glands or, or any changes on the glands. It can go very quickly away. Uh, I had even examples where uh, a lady um, went for examination, she got diagnosis, uh, straight after that we started working, in a few months' time, she went for a checkup. She didn't want to go for a checkup prior to that because she didn't feel a need, but okay, she went for a checkup. And you know what they said? Oh, looks like we made a mistake with diagnosis. And it's not that it happens once, it happened many times. Actually, even one time, 
uh, one other doctor suggested to the patient, you, you should sue the other doctor because of the false diagnosis. And the diagnosis wasn't false at all. It's just that uh, there was that was quite easy to resolve it. And it's almost possible to uh, monitor that on a, uh, a daily level. I had another client uh, who had uh, mother-child mother side issue. And each time when she would have bad news about her grandchild that was just born and on a life support, very difficult case, every time she would hear some news and um, you know, it wasn't going well with baby, her breast would uh, swell and uh, become very painful. And then we start working on it and it goes down. And in a few days time, again bad news and breast reacts. It was fascinating to observe that change when emotions are changing within her and her perceptions are changing. We can actually uh, observe the change in, in, in a very short period of time. And I was the one who was uh, going with her to the doctor because she doesn't speak much of English. Uh, so I went to help her translate and she asked her doctor, uh, could it be the case that the stress is a reason? And he said, no way. So that's usually what happens. So I'm so excited to see here in India so many doctors joining MetaHealth. It is fantastic because those doctors are the gems in the industry. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Hello, good afternoon. Today I'm talk we're talking about menstrual irregularities. It is a common nowadays in India. There are different kinds of menstrual irregularities like menorrhagia, amenorrhea, DUB, dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Today I'm covering menorrhagia, how I integrate meta health with homeopathy. And according to that, how I select the medicine. Menorrhagia, it is abnormally heavy bleeding at menstruation. It might last 10 to 15 days, 20 days. Organ involved is uterus. Types of conflict, according to meta, is sexual conflict. Conflict related to loss of sexual partner or loss of child or a family person or someone who considered as a family. Conflict around the nest or house. Uterus is the first home, so when things are not good at home, the conflict can impact the uterus. Heavy blood flow. Since it is about heavy blood flow, it is also related to identity as blood means identity. Her self-image, also connected to blood relations. There are, uh, uh, in menorrhagia, there are three types, uh, main the in puberty and premenopausal uh, menu, menorrhagia, along with the uterus, hormones are also affected. Around 25 to 30 age, 35, uh, 30 to 35 age, there is only uterus are affected. And in pu uh, puberty and premenopausal menorrhagia, hormones are affected. Brain layer involved are brainstem, medulla and cortex. Case studies, I found some certain cases. Uh, Mrs. P.K. was going through property dispute with her uncle related to her grandfather's house where her mother is staying alone. She is the only person who is handling this court matter. Also, there is no sexual relationship between her and her husband and she got this uh, problem, suffering from this menorrhagia. Mrs. M.S. lost her cousin in a road accident and the death was very sudden and traumatic. She was later diagnosed of menorrhagia. Mrs. S.S. is frustrated in her life as there are constant fights between her mother and her mother-in-law as all are staying together in the same house. Now, these are the homeopathic rubrics which are taken according to the meta-health conflicts. Business talks of, elements from cares, worries, Cares, worries, loved ones, element from bad news, elements from death of loved ones, elements from death of loved ones, child of. This, these are the rubric language. We convert the patient's language into this rubric form and according to that we select the medicine. Elements, elements from discord between parents, one, delusion harmony not in, delusion disharmony in, betrayal in husband or uncle, communicative or friendly, elements from fight and quarrel. Anxiety felt about others, elements from shock, elements from discord between family, 
ailments from mental shock, parturition, ailments from anxiety and anticipation. Thank you. So I visited a village, not, not a village, it's a small town uh, in north of India. Have you heard of Ludhiana? So I visited that town and it was amazing that every third woman there did not have a uterus. Every third woman there did not have a uterus. She either had breast cancer, her uterus removed, or her fallopian tubes were not there even as young as 20 odd years of age. My research proved that that belt A is high in toxicity because it's got, it's an industrial area. Second thing, what was happening at the family front that this story was happening from one house to another? How many of you know about Punjab? Is it a rich area or a poor area? Very, very rich area. It's an industrial or a farmer's belt. Very good. What do you think happens when there is a lot of wealth that you have and you have your wife who's sitting at home taking care of everything? What do you think can happen, guys? Please. This is something about Ludhiana. Yes. I've stayed in Punjab and it's my pride to speak about Punjab. Please. Being able to. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Ludhiana comes from Ludhiana, Patiala and uh, Jalandhar. Especially Jalandhar and um, Ludhiana come from Dwaba. This is a farmer's belt over there. People are very rich. Men do not have time for their women. Very good. Secondly, most of them have shifted abroad. One family from every family. One person from every family is in, they call it Canada, not Canada. Canada. Canada, Canada. Toronto. <laughs> they are in Canada. That's not Toronto, it's Toronto. Yeah. And secondly, Ludhiana is one place which has a pseudo society. In whole of Punjab, you can find that pseudo society in Ludhiana. They make up everything. Pseudo society means I cannot go out without having the right clothes to wear. I'm Even going to if I get up in the morning and wash my face, I should have my hair fixed. Then if I'm going to a wedding, I must look like a Christmas tree. You know, you know what? I have to buy clothes because I have to go for my daughter's doll's wedding. Yes. Yes. So, you know what? I need to get a dress made. Oh my God, that lady is looking so absurd. Sorry. No, this is, this is beautiful. Just go on. Oh my God, how can I, oh, she has five diamond rings. I need to have ten. Well, let me At tell you ten. how they flaunt it. <laughs> can I have a chunni, please? You like take this. Sure. You know, I went to that market and I really, I don't have money, but can you see this? No, yeah, yeah, it's Isn't nice, it nice. Isn't it beautiful? My it is, it is. My husband bought this for a lack. It's a solitaire. <laughs> oh, hmm. I picked this up, you know, from where? Ah, she's so snobbish. She'll, see, she'll, she'll speak like that. My it's okay. God, yeah, 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 it's a nice, nice. She doesn't know how to dress up. She's wearing those clothes and those heels. My God. Ooh. She doesn't know how to appreciate things. I mean, Don't I'm, you know, I'm good. know, Shaina? This woman is mad, actually. Her husband is... You know what he's doing behind her back? He's right there and right there and doing something. Right? <laughs> well, that is the society which she calls a pseudo society. And the result of that pseudo society is breast cancer. Because of what Rashmi said. Each person in the house has one person missing. And they all have to go where? Outside the country and not any other place but to the land of Richard Fluke, Kanada. <laughs> yeah, just that they haven't met him there. 
or they will all heal. So, yes. So, they have the breast thing going on. The other thing that was very loud along with it was cervix cancer. You remember what Rashmi said? They do not have time for their... So, who do they have time for? How many? Too many. Too many to count. But believe me, when this man comes back home, you are supposed to... Let me explain this. How many of you know what's fasting for a man? Please, Rashmi, can you throw light on it? Sorry, Dr. Kwesi, I'm not letting you talk. Keep it. <laughs> I think I'll stay, stay here only. Rashmi, you remember? I'll demonstrate. Please do that. Okay. This is what we do. You see, the man should have a long life so that he can have, he can do the what he is doing for many more years. Oh. Yes. <laughs> this fasting is called the Karvachat, and it's done once a year in the month of October, November, and it's for the fasting for the man. So the woman is supposed to wake up in the morning, eat sargi at four o'clock in the morning. Sargi means, you know what? She's it's supposed food. to have certain amount of food. Certain special foods, she puts mehndi on her hand, she dresses up like a, like, a, like a bride and of course she has to dress up like a Christmas tree on that day. Very Lots good. Lots of bangles, mehndi, churi, everything decked up. And of course and in the morning food. rich food. And in the morning at 4 o'clock rich food. I remember Rob tell, uh, no, no, Richard telling me in the morning that I am telling my son that he is he, that I'm eating curry in the morning for breakfast, and if I tell Richard that in at four o'clock you have to eat gobi paranthas, I mean um, cauliflower paranthas. Can you play this? Oh my God! <laughs> so this comes up in the morning. Yeah, this starts in the morning with the fasting, with a heavy fasting, and no food and water the whole day. So at 4 o'clock in the evening, around 4 o'clock, there is a puja. By the, time, by the time the music comes on, just to let you know, again I'm repeating what she said, the woman is supposed to pray and, and see the moon and then drink water. That. Right. <laughs> and for the people, if her husband is not back home on that day, then what happened? <laughs> then she has to keep the photograph. This is to remind her for the next 364 days that who is her God? Please, please. I don't know where's the wound. <laughs> Did you see the wound? Today. Today Did you see the wound? Not coming. Oh my God! I need, I need water. <laughs> oh, finally, it's there. It's there. Oh my God! It's there. It's there. I Let's it. go. I can't see it. I yeah, can't see it's it. come. It's a come. There's a tree. There. It's a tree. <laughs> it's a tree. <laughs> There's no moon. <laughs> Can you imagine the conflict that can happen once a year if your husband is not there on the day and the husband when he's expected to be? She has been awake, she has been awake since 4 o'clock in the morning fasting and the husband has, is not there. Is not there. there is also another respect here which is there are a lot of jats there. You know what's a jat, right? It's a jat community. is a community of Sikh, not Sikh, Sikh men. Men, Sikh men were supposed to be warriors, okay? So they're not Muslim and they're not Sikh. They're not Sikh. Yes. Please. Yeah, yeah. I love this. Wait, 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 wait. People need to know who are Sikhs. Yes. You can see the Sikh man, he's Sikh. <laughs> there are two communities. And one is one is the Jat Sikhs, they are landowners. Yes. And uh, the other is the Gur Sikhs, 
yes. which are the warriors. The, Thank you. The Jat Sikhs think the Gur Sikhs are nobody. And actually the Gur Sikhs all are descendants of uh, Guru Nanak and you know Ranjit Singh. They all come from the they same. They believe in Gurus. Yeah. Whereas, the, whereas even the Jats believe in the Guru, but uh, they look down on the Guru Sikhs. This, this is, is the also the, side. absolutely, this is also the belt right now with a lot of research excuse that me. is full of drugs. Excuse me, excuse me, let me Haan clarify ji, certain things to you. Bolye. Because of this bad things, most of the Sikhs have left these rituals. Thank you. Can we have a round of applause? They, they Sikhs do not have this ritual. They are the ones and like us. The day I got married, I told my wife not to go for this ritual. I don't like it. Have left that. Brilliant. <laughs> yes, <last year. laughs> Just wanted you to know that the conflict here is that the husband is not there for the wife in the way and the capacity that she wants to be supported. And that is the cause of major, 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 major cause of most of the sexual problems that women have. The origin of Sikhism is for a reason which was relevant many, topic. many years back. So the reason why Punjabis decided to become Sikhs was to fight the Mughal Empire. It's not relevant anymore. Thank Sorry. you so much. Thank you so much. Can, can, can we go beyond Punjab? Yeah, this is due, due respect to all Punjabis. I am a Punjabi too. But the fun we've made of is not Punjab not Punjabis and Sikhs, it is a mental state of people. Absolutely. Thank you. What I'm trying to get at is, should a 20-year-old not have a uterus? And one thing I must clear, Punjabis are not only Sikhs, they belong to all the other religions too. Absolutely. Those who are living over there, they are Punjabi, Haryana and Himachal. They yeah, are three states just, now. Absolutely. They were actually doing all these rituals. Dun -dun -dun. <laughs> okay, so just to end my research, what I found was cervix cancer is very much on a high over there because men are actually out with other women. And when they say to their wife, darling, now I have fallen in love with you back again. That's the doom day for her. I told you those words, I love you. <laughs> Thank you. So for us non-Indians, that was fascinating <laughs> <laughs> and confusing. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and that's um, what we also need to understand, the cultural background, because then we get the cultural conditioning. Yeah, and to know that here cervix cancer with women depends on the ritual according to the moon, okay. <laughs> it's a little tough to comprehend. <laughs> <laughs> it's a possibility. I want to go back to what Dr. Snehal presented because that was just fantastic. Amazing. I repeat myself again. Meta health and hemopathy is the future of? Yes. So she has found the correlating hemopathic remedies to the correlating conflicts of meta health. So what impact is this having on your daily work as a hemopath? How did that change your, you working with homeopathy when you integrated MetaHealth? Actually, it's become very easy because most of the time, most of the time patients are not open, uh, especially the females about their sexual problems. It makes it easy for us to find out the conflict and ask them directly ki what, uh, this, this thing happened with them. And that finally she agrees, ki haan, like, right, it is there. So it become easy for us to come to the remedy and come to the rubrics for that. I just want to understand, like when you studied, like when you went to Ludhiana, I think you left this point incomplete. Why 20 years old girls don't have uterus there? Uh, you don't marry there because you want to marry there. You get married there because you have to marry there. Once you reach the age of 20, it's almost like you have, you're have you an ambulance with an alarm clock 
you know, that to, 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 it's going on right on top of you. And if you don't get married at the right time, then it is a, it is a matter of shame for the parents. So, and again, what's really more important is, and please, if there is some other view, please bring it up because there's so many Punjabis here. <laughs> so, what I mean to say is, the choices are less, the opposition is more, even if the girl wants to get married to someone that she wants to. So, imagine the man is sexually active, he's wealthy, he's a man of, he's a, he's a son of a rich man. And the girl is supposed to be protected from any kind of any kind of sexuality exposure or sexual exposure. She's you see this chunni of ours is to cover up this area so that you don't see and nobody looks at you like that. So when and when suddenly you've got married to a stranger and he may have needs and you don't know anything about it. All you are told is that you're getting married. This is lovely trousseau you have. You have beautiful clothes. You have to put. You have to look beautiful, but you don't feel beautiful. And that mask of looking beautiful is constantly there. They are not happy in their own home. Like Snehal said, the uterus is the home, the first home for each one of the person in this house, in, over here in this room, as well as in the universe. So if something is going on at home that's not okay with you, it is going to impact the uterus. Let's look at the word you. Tar is three and us. It is you and me make three. You and us make tar. That is three. But you can only reproduce and only recreate if you are feeling like us. Most of the women do not feel like us and there is so much that they have to deal with they live in joint families the husband is going and sleeping with the mom yes the father-in-law is allowed to come into your room and in many communities it's a loud thing yes Hus there, there are all kinds of case studies that have been done but what's really interesting is that father-in-law is allowed to make love to his daughter-in-law if the son cannot reproduce babies. This is there existing in many, many, many families in north of India. And the uncle. And, the uncle. and anybody. What is a girl supposed to do? The Say that again. And the is yes. The is to come in and serve. Please. In many communities where the husband is traveling, the uncle is, exp is allowed to come and do the needful. Yes. And then there was this case where this girl is so beautiful. And you know what's considered beautiful, by the way? If you are fair-skinned, you have light eyes, and you have little light hair, you are considered beautiful. It's called Gauri Chitti, otherwise you're not supposed to be beautiful. Anybody who's dark in my country is not supposed to be beautiful. I like the way everybody's nodding. Yes, it means yes. Okay, so we all have seen this. Now, imagine that you are over there in a situation where you're so pretty that your parents are saying that we can get the moon for you. The significance of that moon is we can bring someone in your life that's as beautiful as the moon. And you don't feel it, but you can't tell your parents anything. Uh, who are you going to ask? Like, it took me 49 years. Who is this girl going to ask for help? And then whatever goes on in the bedroom goes on in the bedroom. I've heard stories, Shaina, and this is to do with Muslim community. I've heard stories where the mother has got the girl married at the age of 18 and she's screaming away because she doesn't know anything about the sex and this man inside her husband is going on with whatever he wants to go on with and the mother, the girl's mother is standing outside and saying this happens sweetheart, continue, it's okay. Yes, these are all true stories, these are all case studies. Yes, 
And yes, then if, if such horrifying stuff is going to happen, there is going to be horrifying stuff happening to the sexual organs. In the Muslim community, the woman is not allowed to feel desire. Only the husband is allowed to feel desire. So when she is maritable age, the women in the household grab hold of her, spread her legs, and chop her clitoris off. Yes. And I've had a young girl come into my room, yes. where I work as a therapist, in a rage because she felt that nobody had the right to do that to her. Okay. Nobody had the right to do that to her. Now, the, culturally, in this country, we have got many, many examples of how we have treated and how we still continue to treat women. Okay. I had, the day before I came in, I think it was Tuesday, for the, for the Ishma conference, I had a whole family come in from the Marwari community. The young girl was married into that family and she signaled to me that she would like to see me alone. So I saw her alone. And she was telling me that this was an impossible family. That she just cannot bear to live in this family. Then I listened to her story. And after that, when they went out, the father, her father-in-law wanted to see me with the mother-in-law. And they were trying to tell me that, you know, she is too rigid. She has to learn to be a little bit more accepting. She does not offer herself to her husband. She does not give herself to her husband. Okay. Can you please make sure she gives herself to her husband? Now that's not quite frankly my job as a therapist. But I have to understand the state of mind that that comes from. So many marriages in India have not been consummated at all. And that too, not in any other place, but quite developed city like Mumbai. And so many of them are probably sitting in this room who then suffer from what is called vagina mismis. It's kind of pain that happens when the muscles contract. And the man cannot penetrate, and it's very, very painful to have intercourse. There are so many couples who are living, maybe Snehal and maybe Yasmina can throw some light on this. Personally, did not have, personally did not have that experience in my practice at all. Uh, I guess uh, in the area where I live, uh, more in Western world, there is a different kind of issues, different yes, kind of problems. Uh, we are all aware about uh, big push uh, about vaccinations uh, for cervical cancer and why so many girls are getting, um, well, uh, change cells or some changes in the cervix. So how much it ties with a modern way of living of young people, uh, girls becoming uh, sexual active in very early age uh, and uh, with number of partners, it's almost kind of uh, acceptable in a, in a society and how many rejections they experience uh, that uh, actually uh, are coming and uh, creating the biological issue. So it comes and goes and comes and goes and just depends at what point of time uh, the screening is happening. It's very easy to detect uh, some changes and point out that there is a uh, you know, presence of papilloma virus, and it means this and this. So we have actually totally different issues in the other side of the world. So it's more what I can see uh, than what uh, this part of the world can say. It's just very different culture. 
Wonderful. Can I introduce to you guys a beautiful man who's just walked in, Dr. Patki. Dr. Patki, can you please come on the stage? Can you please introduce yourself because you're amazing and I don't think I'll do justice to you. Thank you very much for having me here and I'm sorry I'm disrupting a No, you discussion, aren't. You aren't. You're but, right in time. Uh, I will introduce myself when I come up on the stage and talk. So uh, I just keep... wanted you to be part of this oh. story. All right. Please have a seat. Hi. So Dr. Patki is someone who talks from the heart. He says stresses and sexual problems are connected. And for the last one and a half hour, two hours, we've been talking about sexual abuse and then about how women are treated in our country. I would really like a doctor's perspective on it, if it's possible. Yes, I, will of be, I think the whole audience uh, would really, really, really benefit. Thank I'm you. I'm a practicing gynecologist with uh, special practice in infertility. And in my practice, I do see a lot of women coming with stress because they are not able to conceive. Uh, as you all know, in India, uh, infertility is not a problem of the couple, but it's a problem of the whole family. And quite often, women come and tell me, it's not the pain of not having the baby, but it's been the pain of being dissected by other relatives who think that you have some problem. Now, most infertile couples I see are highly successful in other spheres of life. So for them to accept that something which is even achieved by a roadside beggar, that they can't manage it and they have to come to us itself, breaks their heart and their morale. I also see a lot of couples having uh, sexual abuse. I see a lot of domestic violence, which is not which doesn't come up front, but it comes only when you actually try and ask them direct questions. And I, uh, we as doctors itself have to be made, uh, we have to be sensitized, and that's what our, our association is doing. We are holding a series of workshops for doctors itself, because often it was understood and that if somebody came with history of sexual assault or with rape, we, most of the private practicing doctors or the corporate hospitals would send these patients to government hospitals, pack them off to Cyan Hospital, KM Hospital, some municipal hospital, and that would make it worse for these women. Because for them to have the courage to come up to a doctor and say that I have been raped or I have been sexually assaulted, is one thing, and then to be pushed to go to some other faraway hospital because I, I'm not in charge, I don't know. But now that the law has changed, the POSCO Act very clearly says that every doctor should be able to examine a, 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 a woman of sexual assault, and there are, they have been, and they have made small kits which are which it is mandatory that every doctor keeps those kits in their practice so that you know what appropriate samples smears specimens photographs need to be done and that is extremely important the the law also states that the woman that the doctor need not send the woman to the police station a woman constable has to come and take the history or at least be present when uh, the woman is being questioned. So I think the law is very strong. Quite often we are not aware what the law says. And I think that is what we are doing to our gynecologists, that we are trying and making them understand, we are making them aware that it would, they would have a case against them if they did not examine the woman wherever she came, whether it is a private clinic or she came to a corporate hospital and the appropriate findings have to be noted, the police has to be informed, the police has to be called down, the, the, the woman need not go to the police station and there always has to be a woman who is chaperoning if it's a male doctor or uh, uh, there has to be a, a, a female constable. So I think the, the, the POSCO Act is very, very strong. And I think uh, as doctors itself, we were not 
aware of what our responsibilities were. And I think that is uh, what our association, the Mumbai Obstetric Gynec Association, has this violence against women, as we call it in WOW, where we hold it as a seminar, as a half-day sem seminar in our major con conferences, just to sen sensitize our doctors and make them aware of what their responsibilities are towards the society. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So there is a way out, and he's talking about the way out. I would also like you to throw a little light on PCODs. You had spoken about it so much. And if you can, please. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, PCOD is polycystic ovarian disease. But no longer it is called as PCOD because it's not a disease. It is called as PCOS, which is polycystic ovarian syndrome. And this is extremely important because when we counsel the patient, we tell them that you do not have any illness or disease. It's just that there is some genetic predetermination which have made you susceptible to this problem. We see it in large percentage. Almost half my practice in infertility now is with women having irregular periods or periods where they do not produce an egg or as it is called as an anovulatory period. And this is all related to lifestyle. We see young girls who are obese. We see a large amount of obesity even in our country. And what is scaring is we see a large um, uh, amount of childhood obesity. So it is right from childhood that the lifestyle is, is, is wrong. There is virtually no exercise, no games. The only games they play is on the computers. There is a lot of studies and post-school tuition classes and the children are running from one end to the other. High expectations from parents and trying to break uh, records. And all this plays up on the mind and these young girls come up with very, very low self-esteem because they know that they are obese, they know they have got irregular periods and actually it works up on their minds and we find that these girls also start doing bad in their school or their college work. Uh, I think it's the, f it's the whole family that needs to be educated as I often in one of my talks say that PCOD doesn't run in the family because nobody runs in the family. It is because PCOD is a lifestyle disorder, the whole family needs to go out. We encourage parents to switch off televisions when the children are eating food because that way they can concentrate on what they are eating. They know how much they are eating. They know what they are eating. And this, this happens in all our houses. This happens everywhere. And we see, and that is the reason that once the PCOD gets triggered, then it is extremely difficult for these women to get back or these young girls to get back. And you have to actually counsel them. You have, to, I mean, medicines are there, but that, the, that, that forms a second part. Part, I think lifestyle change and lifestyle advice and counsel is what is the primary uh, uh, treatment for women or girls with PCOS. Thank you so much. Thank you. We have more time. Is the cause or effect of PCOS? Uh, it is linked to PCOD. If once they start putting on weight, the PCOD gets triggered. So PCOD is something which is inherited. So you will often find that the mums or sisters or the mum sisters had PCOD. As long as they keep their weight in check, it's not exhibited or it is not manifested. The minute they start putting on weight, the gene gets triggered. So obesity is a trigger point and that's why lifestyle disorders, losing weight, exercise, Diet control is something that we always hammer on. And depression, is that a... Yes, because, because nowadays what is happening in the media, you see, they all think that thin is beautiful. There are clothes uh, available in extra small. I mean, I have women who come and tell me I can't just shop anything in the shop because there's nothing my size. It's all XS and XSS, so, so they are all pressurized, there's so much of peer pressure and young school girls, 16 years, 18 years, do get affected with what the media, the peers 
talk. So there's a lot of poor self image in them. Dr. Patki, when you're talking about lifestyle, and with meta health, we say that there has been either a separation that has happened, that is how we correlate it, or we say that there has been some kind of abuse where identity separation has been there because of which there could be PCO, PCODS. Uh, Yasmina, if you can throw a little bit more light on this so that, and then we can really have, when you're saying lifestyle change, because there's so many here who do have this problem. And also they start getting, so if you can also explain that, it would be wonderful. But Yasmina, if you can just give a little bit more on the meta health view, so. Meta health view of or? PC. Uh, yes, uh, basically it comes to our famous KFC, <laughs> uh, holding more water when we are fish out of the water, retaining the water, so it's collective tubules uh, topic, when we feel abandoned, uh, when we feel out of our environment. So what happens uh, is if we already have uh, cysts uh, and uh, when uh, that kind of uh, syndrome starts, collective, uh, kidney collective tubule syndrome starts, it's very easy for uh, cysts to burst and to go in the whole area and it's, you know, it's, it's whole, the, the whole cycle. So we are talking here about more than one issue, more than one conflict and in order to uh, reduce the chance of developing uh, this whole condition, it's very important to resolve Resolving our kidney collective tubules uh, syndrome, our perception of being fish out of the water, perception of being uh, n uh, n or not being supporting, not being within our community, not being within our environment. It's really all coming from here. It doesn't have anything to do with outside world. Yes, outside world does make a difference to a certain point, but more we work on ourselves and have our inner peace, less uh, we will be affected. So uh, obesity very often uh, is not fat, it's uh, retained water, and that is what's playing a big role uh, in polycystic ovaries uh, as end result of uh, cyst bursting and uh, creating additional problems. Yes. Actually, in, in, in Egypt, I, I had several cases of polycystic ovaries. And I will tell you my, my observation with these cases is that I noticed that all of them, they have problems, major problems with their fathers. Uh, and to, to the extent that when I received uh, a case of polycystic ovary, my first question to her, how are you doing with your dad? And the answer usually is, okay. And then I, I repeat the question, how are you doing with your dad? The answer is, okay. I keep repeating the question, they, then they start crying. It never failed. So I have this very frequent and uh, just, and, um, the cases that continued work with, with, working with me, I managed to improve their relationship with their dads or improve how they feel about their dads. Especially in Egypt, you have a problem, I don't know if you have it here in India, that mothers are, kind, uh, are very much kind of uh, making, a lot, making their daughters like to ally with them against the dad. So the, the daughters talk about, the, 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 the girl talk about her dad as if he's her husband. So she keeps complaining about her dad and they tell her, what I'm hearing is a wife, not a daughter. This is what a wife can say. This is not your complaints. This is your mother. And then the answer is usually, huh? Huh? Yeah, you're right. So I think the problem uh, uh, it's a, uh, by the way, it's a major loss. The, this is the, the, the conflict or the problem with the polycystic ovaries. It's a major loss. And I think for the girl, uh, uh, the, it's a major loss to lose, to have a, a difficult or not successful relation with her dad. And especially the media. 
I'm talking about Egypt here. I'm not, I don't know about here. Uh, uh, especially the media is very much uh, as, a, as a way of liberating women, <laughs> very much uh, pu pushing the relationship between the girls and their dads to the edge so that uh, 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 I'm seeing it almost in 60, 70% of all the girls that visit me in my clinic, they are having very poor relationship with their dad. Dr. Patki, if you can throw some light on this little bit, and then we'll go in for meditation and come back again, because he's got a brilliant lecture, and sorry to kind of just pick you up and bring you here. I saw you and I said, wow, he's walking in there right at the time when it's required. So really, really, really acknowledge you. Thank you so much. But if you can throw a little more lifestyle, what does it mean? Uh, this is very interesting. Uh, we haven't actually looked at that aspect, but maybe we should start looking at it. Uh, but I agree with you that uh, uh, when I say about lifestyle, you find that lots of other friends, now suppose if this is a young girl of 16, 18 years, because of her PCOS, she gets very irregular periods. But the rest of the friends it will tell her that their periods are bang on clock. So imagine four of your friends telling you that I get my period on the 20th of every month. I get up on the 20th and there my period has arrived. So they start feeling very, very low about it because they are the ones who don't know when their period is going to happen. So, you know, it is the peer pressures which are, which are actually mounting on them. They go out in this world and you find that every woman is supposed to have this fair and this soft, supple, peach and cream skin and there they are broken up in acne, with pimples, with hirsutism, with hair on their face, upper lip. So that adds on to the problem. They, they feel like they are the, 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 the ugly duckling, the black duck or the black thing in that whole group. And friends, you know, so at that age, they can be extremely mean. They can actually make it, make it worse for you. So this is what the, these young girls come to us. The mothers are extremely worried because they associate regular menses with, with future fertility. So if they feel that, oh my God, my girl is not getting regular periods, she's going to get a periods every two months and three months, this is going to affect her future fertility. So she in India, as you know, infertility is, is a big stigma. So, so she runs to the first doctor with the girl in tow, saying that she gets irregular periods. Now in a few years, I need to find a match for her. And she is going to have major problems to have children. So it's a huge, big uh, uh, sort of... Uh, a lot of high, high voltage tension for them. I often tell them that it is not necessary that periods have to come every month. In fact, like they make them feel happy. Aren't, aren't you happy? Your periods don't come every month, they come every two months. It's less of a bother, less of a headache, less of pain, less of money spent on tampons and sanitary pads. So I try to put them at rest and say that it doesn't matter. There are people who are five feet are normal. There are girls who are 5'7 and girls who are 5'8 also who are normal. So in science, there is no fixed number. It's a range. So women can get periods from 24 days to 40 days and it really doesn't matter. So this is how we try to counsel them. We try to put them at ease. But we tell them, yes, it is important that you should know when your periods arrive because you are going out for some parties, you are going out some some tours, you are going out for some college picnics and so you should be prepared that in case of your if your menses happens during when you're outdoor you should be equipped to take care and that is why you need to lose a bit of weight you need to get back into exercise so you try to get them back into the fold by not telling them it's a disease it's something that they are born with they have to look after themselves and they can look at the flip point and say oh wonderful i don't get periods every month very happy yes there's somebody there who wants to ask a question um, um, Dr. Patki, I'm just going to talk about myself. Um, I try to uh, conceive um, at the age of 31, 32. I was married for about seven years. 
Um, I was in the United States, so I did my um, evalu well, all the evaluations at Leelavati Hospital with uh, Dr. Coelho. She determined that I have a fibroid above my uterus on the left side, and she said that I should go in for surgery, which I did. But we were unable to conceive, my ex-husband and I, and uh, so we started going for uh, fertility treatments. I've done six IUIs, uh, three IVFs with uh, Gautam Alabadia, and we still could not conceive. And that basically was the end of my marriage. My um, ex-husband actually got his girlfriend uh, pregnant. We started seeing around the fourth IVF cycle of mine, and he refused to uh, go in for it. Um, so when we, I mean, I'll take a step back. Prior to uh, the fourth IVF uh, cycle, my uh, parents decided that, you know, uh, even uh, my ex-husband should uh, do a sperm count, and there was a low sperm count. But how is it possible that he was, I mean, I've uh, consulted, uh, Anumetha is my therapist, and she knows everything about me. And she's given me an excellent, uh, you know, um, explanation. But in, uh, with medicine, and uh, I also have a friend who was my college friend. She studied at King's College of London, and she's an infertility expert in London now. She said that I did not need to go in for uh, the fibroid removal. And uh, I have a perfectly, um, you know, a regular cycle. So, um, and I'm ovulating very fairly regularly, so above average. So how is it that he could make uh, his girlfriend pregnant at the time? Of course, we split after that. And, and not just one time, he, he had two babies with her, which makes me look like I, I'm thinking that maybe I'm the one who's you know, has problems conceiving, whereas initially when we started out, it was his problem. Okay. 20% um, of women have fibroids. So if I pick up 100 women from the road and I scan them, 20 of them will have fibroids. So every fibroid need not be removed. So your friend was right that every fibroid that is seen on sonography isn't a problem because it is present in one in five women. Coming to that, if, you're, if, you, if you had IUIs done, IUI is a very basic treatment, which means your husband's sperm count must have been on the lower side of normal, but, can, but, much, but may not be absolutely abnormal. Okay? So it is possible that with that low count, he could uh, impregnate somebody else. The third thing I find that maybe your relationship was getting sour before he even started seeing that other woman. And in my practice, my most common question I ask couples is, do you have enough sex? And you'll be amazed to know that almost 60% of couples say no. We don't have enough sex. We had a very good slide. Sorry? We had very good... I don't think I've had a better consummated okay. marriage. So, so that could be, uh, uh, that is something that I like to sort of look at when I find couples who do not conceive because sometimes they, because of work pressures or various reasons, their sex frequency is low. And as, oh, as I said, yes, that I'm, maybe sometimes... I'm sorry, you, I'm not going to interrupt you, but because you're no. saying something, do you want me to give you an answer? Or no, I'll no, just no, no. I'm just, I'm just telling there are various no, because reasons. Because I want to also emphasize the timing of it is around, uh, you know, um, September 11, 2000, well, when the terrorist attacks, etc. So. so all that stress and things do matter. And sometimes it could be that maybe your husband's sperm counts, as I said, must be on the lower side of normal, but still possible to be on the fertility range. So it is possible that he has managed it as far as... And there are thousand and one reasons why pregnancy has not happened in you. So it's very difficult just on prime, prima facie to say that uh, uh, why it's not happened with you and it's how it's happened with somebody else. So very difficult. But I have seen... Uh, uh, 
lots of couples who actually split up and then on their with their with their new partners they are able to have a pregnancy naturally so it is it it it's not something which is very rare thank you very much and we'll end this uh, session and we'll have a small meditation and then we'll bring back dr patki with proper introduction thank you so much but not too short because you should get something from that please my best i do my best i first i would like to demonstrate something because it seems yesterday not everybody catched up what i explained here on stage well of course because it was just explanation just words and no demonstration and i like demonstration very much because well first it's on the stage with one guy i called rob but just a second <laughs> just a second i will call you again <laughs> yeah exactly um i will explain why and the problem is there's not a workshop so you cannot make the same experience now so you just have a little bit to believe what's happening now here on stage that's a pity i can't change it anyway but here i want you to show that there's a well let's say a very natural state that you can act enter it's a state which is very close to your true being you have it all the time available and this can do very much it's i call it self empowerment but well the word empowerment is not really true because it means you don't receive some external power it's more some internal power which is available all the time which you usually what with your lifestyle suppress all the time or you misuse it if you have fear towards something or if you have a goal or any expectation this will not work because all power is now you maybe heard about that somewhere some people out there i will show what happens if i call it the old world with expectations with anger with sadness all these things tries to act against a real self against somebody who's a little bit more embodying the true you for this i call rob <laughs> thank you now? yeah you can now thank you because i need somebody thank you i'll explain shortly i need somebody who can enter uh, emotions by decision this is easier now for the stage for workshop is different but for stage i need that and somehow I, you came to my mind but this is a very good quality because when you can enter it by will power you can also exit it by will power usually people and and enter um, by any situation i get angry to get rid of that anger is very difficult so i need that for exit and enter i think it's uh, possible for you only for a short time here i need his anger i need his expectations i can catch you and i can keep you there with all my anger and my power i see your i need your your physical power your anger on the emotional level and also expectation i can do that this is as the old world and i think you can find out the correlation to the topic on stage which was before how you can use that in your life and i explain more to this after that and i give a short meditation for you how you can enter that state and from then on you act out of that state if you like and not out of anger not out of fear etc so you see when two worlds collide what happens as much as you can because when you're more angry you're more let's say on the dark side <laughs> yeah that's it huh? away from the light away from the self very narrow well minded that i need that because when you confront exactly that to the eternal part the uh, effect is much more uh, profound so it makes it easier for me okay the more you're going away from love and peace and all of that okay cool okay very fine but i have to make it on the floor because for the beginning stage that's easier because huh? i had don't have much time so don't who can see that they have to stand up i can't help no 
Yeah, I explain what you have to do. You have to just fix me, and to make it easy, I just give two fingers, like this, and you grab the fingers, yeah. and your job is, with all anger, expectation, I can do that when I'm in power. I can I keep you there. I can keep you sitting here like that. Exactly. Okay. You don't move, like I, I move you, I just I fix you. Well, this is, this is my, it's a cage. I make you a cage. And it's easy because it's just a finger, no? First, I will um, react as people usually react. Like with, again, anger, angry towards him, or with fear. doesn't matter anyway. This is what I will first do, but only shortly because this will hurt. Everybody knows that. This is going to hurt, so I make it only short. Now, I'm going to the opposite part, and I will show you later how to do that, so don't worry. And then you will see what happens. While I'm switching, what is happening with him, and also when I, and then I'm trying to, trying to move, okay? Not that easy for me because I was ill before that. Thank you. So this is what happens. And you've seen his face? Trying to get more anger. Trying and you found out you lose of your power. What experienced you in, in, in exactly there? What was your experience? The main experience that threw me off a little is I, I did have your fingers, but I lost grip. Emotion? Your emotion? Um, at first, the anger increased okay. to see if I could regain grip. Uh, then my strategy started to change because what can I do to keep him fixed? Exactly. And then the emotion dropped. Exactly. Thank you. Then you smiled. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Then you lost. Yeah. Well, not lost. I will explain that because it's not about winning anymore. So this is uh, important because. You weren't told to do that, but he did do that. He felt the anger was not enough to do what he could do before. So he put on top again some more anger. He wasn't told to do that, but it's okay. And then found out this was still not enough. I cannot do more. And then it gets lost. This is what happens when the law sets in, when shadow and light is in the same place. And he tries to put his shadow, let's say, his minor energy, which anger is a minor energy, it's just the color, not white, put his minor energy and convince me to do the same. To also get angry, or to maybe also surrender and say, well, I'm getting into fear and let's do whatever I like. I say, no, because we are not separate. If you are fearful, you're separate from the other person. You say, I'm right, you are wrong, we are separate. And then you shut down your heart. And your heart is the biggest magnetic field you can have at the moment. Much bigger than, the, than your brain has. This means the more somebody goes into anger or, or something to convince you to go lower, lower energies, the more you open your heart, the more you yourself stay in peace and love, in light, it's the same thing. If I could stay there forever if I like, it won't hurt. But then, this is what usually is missing in meditation. People do meditation and enter that state, they enjoy it, and they go out and get back into their old world. I say, just use that state. Don't just enjoy it, express it. And this is what happened. He grabbed me, I get into the state, still also not disconnecting from him, not disconnecting from my joy and my peace. I can be in peace with him trying to make me angry. Why not? I can also enjoy that. And then I express it. I expand just the light. What has the shadow to do when the light expands? It's just a law. 
Everybody knows. And the most interesting is that you will lose your, your physical power, you will lose your anger, and also um, your expectation what you can do now. You were, you were shortly like, um, what's the name in English? Verwirrt? Confused. Yeah. We'll find out these three stages like confusion um, and happiness and, and joy will come up. You just try to be angry. So, let's say I convinced him to enter the same stage. Thanks. This everybody can do here, just takes about two days to enter the same. But this, uh, this let's say, um, state of your own true being, you are all know. And we enter it with a small meditation now, doesn't take long. Just keep aware of that state. And I just, well, let's say, try out to keep that state and act out of that state, whatever you're doing. If you call somebody who's not in a good mood, first enter that state and then call and keep that state. This is just a very good training. How much can you still decide to feel peace when surrounding war is ongoing? And then act out of that and see what happens. That's it. And this is, the power is much, much higher. And he was no enemy anymore. We have done this together. I didn't want to fight him. There was no winning or losing. He was just, let's say, confused. He lost contact to his own self. And I helped him to recontact that. So how to do that? Very easily. Well, one we did already, two days ago. Yeah. And now you make a very simple one. This one enters more peace than love. You can combine both later if you have attended that. Mostly it's easier with closed eyes. Just what is easier for you to, to feel yourself, be aware of yourself? You choose. First stage is just imagine yourself sitting in a, inside of a very big bubble, bubble of glass, Inside that bubble is nothing. And here you put everything that you physically identify yourself with. Means your mobile phone, your keys, your clothes, your car, your home. All the things that you really appreciate, that are close to your heart. You all put them outside in this big bubble. So people who know you, if they see that this bubble on those pieces of material things, they know they belong to you. Your glasses, your jewelry, your computer, all the things that are valuable to you. You all let them go outside. Leave yourself now. Just imagine all these things surrounding you now. Then as much as you can. You don't have to do all in precise, just some of them. Now you're floating upwards until you're on top of that bubble. You see yourself, your physical body, sitting there, surrounded by all these physical things that are you, that you think are you. Then you lift your inner eye and you will find you are in a second very big bubble, again empty. And there you put everything outside of yourself which you are emotionally, feelings, emotions that you have usually, you put them all outside so you can see them. Maybe you see colors, maybe you see some lights, I don't know how you will see that, but all these emotions, just let them flow outside self and let them surround you. All that you think on the feeling and emotional level, you are. All this is allowed now to flow outside of you. And your emotional body, however it looks like, 
you also let it stay there on the ground and you still go up, floating up again until you're on top of that second bubble and below you you see all these colors, emotions, feelings and your emotional body. You lift your inner eye and you find yourself in a third bubble, again empty. Here you let everything flow out of you which are you on a mental basis. That means your name, your telephone number, your birth date, your birth place, your address, all these data, all these information that make up you. Let them all flow out. As good as you can, that's enough. And now, your mental body, however it looks like, you also leave it there and we are floating upwards again, much lighter than before, sitting on top of the third bubble. You, below you see all those mental things you identified with. And then you lift your inner eye, you'll find there's nothing. Just stay there. Just stay there in this emptiness. Stay there and just see what happens. Very fine and very calm state. And this state is always inside of you in the very core. And remember, whatever you're doing, feel that state first and then you act to express that state of peace and emptiness. Because nothing can stick to emptiness. So if you express emptiness, you are completely free and nothing can grab you. No emotion, no thought and even no person. People can meet you only who are on the same level. That's it. And then, just open your eyes again. Don't go back to the bubbles, just open your eyes and try to feel it even with open eyes. Try to have a little bit of connection to the same state, even with open eyes. I know it's more difficult. And here on stage, I did not more than that. Plus, open some heart means feeling some more joy, some more peace, some more love, and then express this in addition. That's all I did, nothing more. And I know your mind is telling you somebody is grabbing me. It's impossible. Just try it.